Welcome to the Warbird Mistress. This is London Calling. Today is Thursday, 8 August, 1940. Good evening. Last night was quieter, with small raids on coastal shipping and some mine-laying activity. Today brought a variety of sunshine and showers, with clouds over the channel. And it was a very dark day. While there were none of yesterday's thunderstorms, there was plenty of fire in the sky as the Luftwaffe made fighter sweeps over Dover in support of three major assaults against Convoy Peewit off the Isle of Wight, St. Catherine's Point. The onslaught began at 0840 hours when the 2nd and 3rd Gruppen of Schwarzkampfgeschwader 1 sent over their diving Hellions and 1JG27 brought along their Messerschmitt 109s to protect the Stukas. While Hurricanes of number 145 Squadron out of West Hamnet were sent to intercept the formation, this did not stop the lumbering gull-winged bombers from sinking our 1,600-ton steamer, the SS Cocadale, and the 1,000-ton SS Ajax of the Koninklijke Nederlandse Stunwurt Maxkapi. Our Hurricanes dove on the bombers first and did shoot down two of the Stukas and severely damaging two others before turning to the Messerschmitts. Although the escorts had the advantage of altitude as they dove towards the deck-level dogfight, they lost three of their number while only downing two of our Hurricanes. The second engagement of the day involved a large-scale German fighter sweep in the Dover area that was designed to distract and wear out our fighters in preparation for another raid on Bewit. At 11.45 hours, Spitfires of 41, 64, and 65 squadrons were engaged by BF-109s of 3 JG-26 and 3 JG-51. A Blenheim of number 600 squadron was nearby in a training flight and was shot down together with four of the Spitfires. One BF-109 was shot down, and three heavily damaged. They would be forced to land at saint Omer and written in order combat. At five minutes after noon, only twenty minutes after the previous engagement had begun, an even larger formation of Stukas descended on convoy Peewit. Nearly sixty bombers in a combined formation from STG-2, STG-3, and STG-77 were joined by a formation of BF-110 escorts from 5LG-1 at their altitude, plus a high-altitude escort of 30 BF-109s from the 2nd and 3rd Gruppen of JG-27, who hovered above waiting to pounce on our boys. Their plans went awry, however, as intercepting Hurricanes from 145, 257, and 238 squadrons, supported by Spitfires of 609 squadron, shot down seven German aircraft, with nine Spitfires and five Hurricanes lost to the massive German formations. The final attack on the besieged convoy took place at 1615 hours, and it was the largest by far. Schwarzkampfgeschwader 1 and Schwarzkampfgeschwader 77 sent a total of 82 Stukas against the convoy, while two JG-27 supplied 68 BF-109s, and LG-1 contributed a flight of 110s. Diving on the ships off Bournemouth, they were met by the blazing brownings of hurricanes from numbers 43 and 145 squadrons, Six German aircraft were sent into the drink, and even more were heavily damaged. Six Hurricanes were also lost, but they successfully prevented the bombers from hitting any of the ships in this run. Joining the scrap came Spitfires of No. 152 Squadron, but they faced off poorly against the fighter sweep south of Swanage of BF-109s from JG-53, when two of our fighters were forced to land after suffering heavy damage. Convoy Peewit was hardest hit, of course. Only four of the twenty ships were able to dock at Swanage. Even the anti-sub yachts and trawlers sent to collect survivors were under attack. In the air, losses were heavy on both sides. Germany lost twenty-four aircraft, plus many heavily damaged that barely limped back to France. Thirty German pilots and aircrewmen were also lost. The RAF losses totaled twenty-one aircraft, nineteen pilots, and two aircrewmen. Number 145 Squadron's pilot officer Lionel Argent of Enfield, Middlesex, crashed in the channel flying Hurricane P-2955 against BF-109s off the Isle of Wight. Most likely shot down by Unteroffizier Sippel of the First Staffel JG-27. He was a son of Charles Henry and Maud Emily, both of Cambridge, 
and had a shared DO-17 and a shared U-88 to his credit during his mere six weeks as a fighter pilot. The same squadron also lost Sergeant Eric Debnam Baker of Wimborne Dorset. Having joined the RAF in January 1937, he was called up when Poland was invaded. He was flying Hurricane P-3381 when shot down by Feldwebel Müller of First Staffel JG-27. His body, like that of Pilot Officer Argent, is not to be found. Sergeant David Ian Curtin of No. 65 Squadron was shot down over Manston by a BF-109 while flying Spitfire K-9911 and killed instantly when he crashed in flames near the airfield. He is truly just one part of a family that knew sacrifice for God, King, and Country. Born to James Hughes Curtin of the Senior Service, his father died of illness while on duty in 1918. His two uncles also died while in service. William Howard Curtin at Ara in 18th Battalion of London Irish in 1917, and 1916, Samuel Palmer Curtin while aboard Indefatigable when she went down at Utland. The penultimate of his line, David Ian Curtin enlisted in 1935 as an RAF boy entrant. He will be buried adjacent to his father. His older brother, squadron leader J.H. Curtin, the last of the family name, will be killed aboard a Wellington bomber on 27 January 1944. Number 65 Squadron also lost Flight Sergeant Norman Taylor Phillips of Gillingham, New Kent. He had joined the RAF back in 1924 as an aircraft apprentice and was passed out in 1927 as a qualified carpenter. Applying for pilot training, he earned the rank of Sergeant Pilot in 1931. He was aboard 65 Squadron when war was declared against Germany, and had a DO-17 and BF-109 to his credit, as well as two damaged DO-17s. He was shot down in Flamesee by Oberleutnant Munchelberg of 3 JG-26 while flying Spitfire K-9905. Number 600 Squadron's Blenheim L-8665's crew of three that were lost were Flying Officer Grice, Sergeant Keist, and Erk First Glass Warren. Dennis Nev Grease of Ealing was commissioned into the Royal Air Force Officer Reserve in 1931, but relinquished it in his second five-year tour when in June 1939 he took a five-year commission in the Volunteer Reserve. Sergeant Francis John Keast of Swalecliff, Whitstable, had joined the Auxiliary Air Force in April 1936 and was called up and put into training as an air gunner in August 1939. Aircraftman First Class John Benjamin William Warren of High Angar, Essex, had joined the RAF in December 1938 and volunteered for aircrew duties after the outbreak of war and was trained as an RDF AI operator, or as it's known to some Americans, airborne radar. The Blenheim was shot down by Oberleutnant Sprich of 3JG-26. Grace stayed at the controls of the burning aircraft over Ramsgate and tried to get her away from populated areas, managing rather to crash her into the sea. The bodies of Grice and Keast were to be found near the site, while that of First Eric Warren will wash up near Calais. Flying Spitfire L-1039, Number 64 Squadron's pilot officer Peter Frank Kenner Davis of Kensington, London, was critically injured when his craft burned up over Dover. After successfully bailing out of a stricken craft, he was found to have severe burns as well as shrapnel from enemy fire and from his own aircraft's interior, lodged in his head, body, and the length of both right extremities. He will die of his wounds on 10th of August. Number 257 Squadron, Sergeant Kenneth Barton-Smith of London and late of Tonbridge, Kent, had joined the RAF Volunteer Reserve two weeks before the outbreak of war. With but one month of elementary training and another month of intermediate training, he was only just out of six months of fighter training school when assigned to the squadron. He was last seen engaging Jerry off St. Catherine's Point in defense of Peewit in Hurricane R-4094. He is missing and presumed drowned, and his body will never be recovered. Noel Moody Hall of Hamble, Hampshire, son of Admiral Hall of the Navy and late of Hilton College near PMB in Natal, South Africa, was lost today while the controls of Hurricane P-2981 with Number 257 Squadron today. A graduate of RAF College Cranwell's class of 1935, he was gathered to the Air Force Cross in January 1939 while performing meteorological duties at RAF Mildenhall. He was a pioneer with the wireless flight at RAE Farnborough before being assigned as flight commander with 257 Squadron. He was last seen today engaging a BF-109 and taking heavy fire in defense of Convoy Peewit. 
His body will be recovered at meny en val on 11 September, but not be identified until 1948. Number 257 Squadron also lost Flying Officer Brian William Jesse Darcy Irvine of Sedan Kedah, Unfederated Malaya, late of Trinity College, Cambridge, where he read architecture. A member of the University Air Squadron and commissioned to the Volunteer Reserve in October 1938, he was posted to 257 Squadron two months ago on 14 May. He was last heard from flying Hurricane P-3058 and engaging Messerschmitt 109s over St. Catherine's Point's Pepper Pot. His last words were those of a warning to a flight mate with a BF-109 on his tail to take evasive action when he himself was shot down by another 109 in the massive dogfight. Like so many others, his body is never to be recovered. Also missing and presumed dead is Flight Lieutenant Donald Eric Turner of Number 238 Squadron. Turner, a true Kelpie from Port Stanley in our Falkland Islands, who was laid off Barry St. Edmunds following the family's return to Britain. Having previously served in the TA's Artist Rifles Regiment, he joined the RAF in 1932. Called back to service on the outbreak of war, he had a 109 to his credit and one shared BF-110. He did not return to base after today's engagement and his body will not be recovered. Also of number 238 squadron and lost today over the channel is Flying Officer Derek Charles McCaw of Victoria, London. He rode for King's College, Cambridge, where he also learned to fly in the Aero Club, and was a member of the University Air Squadron. He joined the RAF in one of the few direct entry permanent commissions and began service in June of 1938. An Army cooperation pilot before the war, he joined 238 Squadron on 16 May and since then had a shared BF-110 to his credit. He was shot down today while flying Hurricane P-3617. His body washed up ashore and is to be buried by our comrades in occupied France in the cemetery at saint ville sur fecamp Number 145 Squadron lost three pilots today. Pilot Officer Ernest Cecil John Wakeman of Yelland Farm, Rattery, South Devon, was educated at South Devon Technical College and was an avid marksman and member of the local rugby span. While in a reserved occupation as a farmer, he chose to serve as king and joined the RAF on short service commission in February of last year. Assigned to ferry duty, bringing hurricanes to France during that campaign, he drew blood on the engagement at Dunkirk when he shot down two Heinkel 111s and damaged a third in only two days' time. He was wounded by a round from a BF-110 on the morning of the 27th May, only to fly a second mission that same day and get shot down again. Making his way to our lines, he was evacuated by ship and was awarded the DFC for his actions on 21st of June. While with 145 Squadron, he added a Heinkel 111, a DO-17, an HS-126, and two shared Dornier 17s to his credit. In the engagement today against Stukas and BF-110s, he flew Hurricane P-2957 and is presumed to have crashed in the channel. His body is never to be recovered. The democracy of combat was truly shown today when, flying Hurricane P-3163, Lord Shuttleworth of Gotha Paul Burnley, Lancashire, was shot down and declared missing, presumed dead, in the engagement over Pewit. With three shared victories to his credit, a 111, a U88, and a Henschel 126, Flying Officer the Honorable Richard Uchtred Paul K. Shuttleworth, 2nd Baron Shuttleworth, was last seen engaging Stukas and BF-110s. Again, like so many others, his body is never to be seen again. His brother, the 3rd Baron, will lose his life for king and country in the sands of Tunisia on 17 November 1942, while on service with the Royal Artillery. Fleet Air Arms Sub-Lieutenant Francis Allen Smith of Barrow and Furness had been on loan with No. 145 Squadron since mid-June. Quickly converting to Hurricanes, he had already survived one crash on the 12th of last month. And today, after engaging over Convoy Pewit, neither he nor Hurricane P-3545 will ever be seen again. He is declared missing, presumed dead, and will never be recovered. Pilot Officer John Cruttenden of Ealing had joined the RAF in May of 38 and had only just survived an engine fire on the 7th July when he was shot down today and crashed into the channel. He was flying Hurricane P-3781 with No. 43 Squadron and was last seen taking heavy fire from BF-110s. Neither he nor his aircraft will be recovered. The last casualty on today's grim list is Pilot Officer Johannes Volof Stefanos Olofsa of Johannesburg, South Africa. Flying Hurricane P-3468 with No. 43 Squadron, 
He took heavy fire and was sent into the channel today while defending Convoy Pewit. His body will wash ashore at Worthing on 25 September, and he is to be buried near his comrades at St. Andrew's Churchyard in Tangmere. And that is the news for today. Thank you, and good night. Thank you for tuning in to the Warbird Mistress. This is London Calling, a day-by-day -day detail of the Battle of Britain, and I hope that you subscribe, watch the playlist for new editions, and do check out other offerings on this channel. Subscriptions through Patreon and YouTube are more than welcome to keep this channel going. Thank you and take care.